welcome to TNT, our very first guest, an individual that's uh, quite recognizable, you might say, be he in a wrestling ring or walking down the, the street. You would uh, want to make a big, wide path. You would have to if you're going to pass this man on the sidewalk. Would you please welcome King Kong Bundy? <laughs> You I'm better a... shore up this stage a little bit, McMahon. You've got a multi-million dollar piece of talent out here. And yes, I would. I hate to see this thing give way, you know, Albert? It was creaking very loudly. It sure was. As a matter of fact, you just do fit in that chair, don't you? Yeah, it's a tight fit. It might even be a little tighter fit than uh, when Next Andre... Next time, have a bigger one out. Yeah, definitely bigger than Andre the Giant. Andre was sitting in that chair. I'm not too sure he filled it up quite like you do. I, I would think uh, one of the obvious uh, goals that you might have, but one that might be a little far-fetched. Uh, what would happen if, if you were to step into the ring with uh, Andre the Giant? Well, I think everybody's already seen what happened when I was in the ring with Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant was left in the middle of the ring laying there, and I walked out of the ring with my hand raised. No, wait just a minute. You, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later Everybody on. saw. What's to talk about? But that was obviously uh, a situation you're referring to the one with Big John Stud, the double team That's effort. What a double team. We're not talking effort. about one-on-one. -on -one. Right now, though, let's Rick take you to King Kong Bundy. One-on-one -on -one in the squared circle will join the match, I believe, in progress. Wow! What a devastating elbow off the ropes. Did you hear that? Bundy yelled to the crowd, who wants to be next? Well, King Kong Bundy made a spectacle of himself about a month ago in Maple Leaf Gardens as he interfered in Andre the Giants match. He's going to have to pay for that somewhere down the line, Jess. Uh, I'll tell you what, the Giants paying for it, and the Giant may keep on paying for it, because I don't believe, honestly, in my opinion, Andre the Giant may not be ready for this man. I think Andre the Giant is ready for anybody who could possibly enter the realm of professional wrestling. Put on some 40 pounds of late, Jess. Hey, no matter how great you are, at some time you're due to fall, Gorilla. You're due to fall. Oh, I firmly believe that anybody can be beaten on any given night. There's no question about that. This but man better, right here. You better gather your friends and pack your lunch if you're going to try to do that to well, Andre. I'll tell you right now, this man right here, King Kong Bundy, could well be the man to silence Andre the Giant. Only time will tell that for sure. Right now, Mr. Mancini feeling the wrath of King Kong Bundy. One of these days, we'll get him to go down to the stockyards and hang on the meat scale and find out, wow, wow what a clothesline for sure, just how much this hulk of humanity weighs. Tell him how great I am. You hear that, Gorilla? Yeah, He's I yelling at that. you, saying, yeah. tell him how great I am, Monsoon. I just told him you got to go down to the meat scales, down in the stockyards, and check out and see how much you really weigh. I know you're over 500. Backbreaker, well executed by this very agile behemoth. Two count. No, jerked him up by the hair. I don't like to see that. Look at that. That's the first time I've ever seen King Kong Bundy smile. He's got some nice pearly whites in there, Gorilla. Uh, he probably smiled because there isn't a mirror around, that's why. Imagine getting Whoa. up every morning taking a look at yourself. That chop almost decapitated Mancini. Look out, Avalanche coming! And there goes Mr. Mancini, face first. Look at the megaphone mania over there. I'm glad he's on that side of the ring. Bundy, all 500 pounds, crashing down. Two count. Good night. Wait a minute. Oh, come on. This King is not Kong necessary. King Kong wants a five. Give me a break with the five count. All right. That was you in action. <laughs> Obviously pleased with your performance there. Why do you insist on the five count? Well, you know something, man? I don't want somebody getting out of the ring. I don't want, when I beat Andre the Giant, I don't want him going back and telling people he got beaten with a fast count by King Kong Bundy. I give him that extra two count. I give him the five. That way, when Bundy beats you, you know you've been beat. Well, indeed, you, you are well uh, aware of, well of, I would think, the fact that uh, Andre's sternum is uh, allegedly 100% uh, uh, back to what it was uh, before the mishap in Toronto. There was a reference to it in that tape, as a matter of fact. Uh, when you and Big John Studd double-teamed uh, Andre the Giant and uh, uh, apparently cracked his sternum. 
You know, all I've heard is from blowhards like that monsoon on there, talking about Andre the Giant being 100%. After what me and Stud did to him, there's no way. Four big splashes, 460 pounds coming down on that ribcage. I guarantee you, the man will be back because he's a great competitor, but I guarantee you, he'll never be back 100% of what Andre the Giant once was. So indeed, you are hopeful then of becoming the first man to say, I defeated Andre the Giant. I will be the first man to defeat Andre the Giant, and not just with a three count. Like I said, you just saw me beat somebody with a five count. I'm going to beat Andre the Giant with that same five count. Well, we'll look forward to that opportunity when you face uh, Andre the Giant, should that uh, match be signed. In any event, we'll be following the career of King Kong Bundy right now. We can follow the one and only Lord Alfred Hayes with a special update on how you can win a Silver Cloud Three Rolls Royce just for writing your name and address. It's the first annual Wrestling Classic, a 16-man elimination tournament. The greatest wrestlers in the world eliminate each other until only one is crowned the victor. On the same night, you could be crowned the winner of the Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud Three. You know, coming up in Chicago is gonna be one of the biggest wrestling tournaments, the biggest, not one of, the biggest wrestling tournament I, Jesse the Body, have ever heard of. Now, I won't be there, unfortunately, because I got prior commitments in Hollywood. But you people out there, no matter what you drive, you may ride on a moped. Can you imagine somebody with a moped wheeling them little wheels down and jumping into their new Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud Mark III? You can win it, whether you're a Pinto driver or whatever garbage truck you drive. You can win this Rolls-Royce. So there will be two winners in Chicago, the wrestler that wins the tournament and the fan who wins the Rolls. Join Hulk Hogan and all the superstars of wrestling on Thursday night, November the 7th from Chicago when the first annual Wrestling Classic will be presented only on those TV cable systems with pay-per-view capability. Win the Rolls-Royce or watch the tournament. Either way, you're sure to be a winner. All right, back with more TNT. Uh, a few moments ago, many of you saw indeed a, a mammoth, a behemoth individual in the World Wrestling Federation. You have to, you have to give credit where it's due as far as uh, this man's athletic prowess. King Kong Bundy is extraordinary. Actually, he could be the biggest man in professional wrestling now. I'm not quite sure. Looking at him and the giant, it is almost a toss-up. Now, he never has been strictly and authoritatively weighed. Mm -hmm. I would say he is... Maybe a fraction over 500. Well, obviously, his, his greatest asset is his enormous size, but our next guest has assets uh, from A to Z, perhaps the most well-rounded athlete in the World Wrestling Federation today. Would you please welcome Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. Sit down, let's talk about it, if you will. Yeah, well, I've been so psyched up for the last month. I have been sitting at home. I've been watching films. I have watched everything that's gone down between us. Sit down, if you will. And want. we're going to settle it one way or the other. Get a hold of yourself. God, Paul, you wrecked the TNT scenery there. Sorry yeah. about that. One of your greatest assets, although, is it not a liability sometimes to be so intense? I mean, isn't it difficult just living with that kind, living with yourself, with that kind of mentality? I use that to my favor, Vinny. That's why I am the way that I am. That's why when I step into the ring, that's why the people out there love Mr. Wonderful right now. And you know something? I've never felt that before in my life. But everywhere I go, kids are huddling around me, little Mr. Wonderfuls, little Wonderfulettes, Mama Wonderfuls, Daddy Wonderfuls, everybody wanting to touch and feel Mr. Wonderful, want his autographs, and I love it. Right. And I love it. And you know why? Do you know what I've you know I, 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 I made that to? Let, let's show you why many people feel you are wonderful. Let's go to the tape. Captain, I understand you're doing very well in the voting in the Manager of the Year contest. Well, I want to thank you very much, Gorilla Monsoon. Uh, I'm out here, first of all, to thank the many, many fans and the people that support the voting for the Manager of the Year. And I feel very elated, very proud, very fine to have all the children, the adults, all the people behind me. Uh, once again, I'd like to say I hear, I hear I'm in the forerunning. I hope it continues that way. It's a very prestigious contest. Uh, I'd love to win. I don't know if I will, but there's well, very, very other capable... Uh, 
uh, fellas in there, Monsoon. You know, you've got Freddie Blassie, you've got Jimmy Hart, uh, you've got Bobby Heenan, you've got so many. You've got Big Jim, Hillbilly Jim. I'm going to vote myself personally for Hillbilly Jim. Well, I understand, Lou, that right at this point in time, you're in the top three contenders, and congratulations. Well, thank you very much, Gorilla. And once again, I thank all the many fans. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Captain Lewis Albano stopping by to say a few words, and Paul Orndorff in the meantime, doing a number here on AJ. Wow, is he inflicting some serious punishment, Jess? Well, I'll tell you, Orn Mr. Orndorff has a streak of viciousness in him, regardless of whether these fans are cheering for him or not. Petrucci clothesline on that top rope. Orndorff looks in just tremendous physical condition. Well, I'll grant him that. He don't have much body fat on him at all. Look out, suplex well executed by Mr. Wonderful. And look at the confidence just oozing out of him. He dropped right to the forehead, looked like, from our vantage point. Brown exuding Mr. Wonderful to... Huh, he got the message. They want to see the pile driver, Jess. Well, he's definitely got the cruise he set up for it. He better go for it while he's got the chance. Mr. Wonderful ramming it in. Got him upside down now. Oh, God. What a shot. Good night. You can count to 100. Mr. Wonderful yeah. dropping him like yesterday's newspaper with that pile driver. He is something. Let's get the official word, Jeff. The winner of the match, Paul, Mr. Wonderful Orndor. All right, Paul Wendorf back with us, and uh, justifiably to a certain extent, uh, with that kind of intensity that burns with inside you, it must it must really burn you up, eat you up to know that that Bobby the Brain Heenan has has placed this not a twenty-five thousand dollar bounty. Now he's gone all the way to fifty thousand dollars for you the men that can put you out of wrestling. That's exactly right. I got a wife and I got two children. You know something, they look up to me to, to feed them, to pay for the bills and everything else. We're talking about Bobby Heenan. He is trying to put me out what makes my livelihood, professional wrestling. He is trying to get the Bundys, the Fox, the Pipers, the Ortons, the Moroccos. All these people are taking shots from me from left and right. Everywhere I go, I got to be worried or concerned about somebody trying to put me out of professional wrestling in my career. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Vince. And I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use this adrenaline. I'm going to use everything that I do for my own benefit. And I'm going to use it to hurt people. If it means carrying somebody out of that ring, and I've done it before, and I'll do it again, I'm going to start toting them out of that ring on a stretcher, because I just made the old stretcher right back again, because I'm not bending for nobody, and I'm not taking a second seat to anybody around here, because I've worked too dead gum hard to be where I am today, and the Heenans, he got just what he deserved, right here in this seat where he was fired. Fired, I mean it, Heenan. Matter of fact, you know, a lot of people have been saying about Bobby Heenan, well, I'm going weasel busting is what I'm going. I weasel want everybody busting. weasel busting. All right. Well, and Piper busting, too. Because we got something to settle, buddy, sooner or later. Piper, now, I don't like it, man. I can't stand the ground he walks on it. I think he's a piece of trash. And, of course, we saw a little bit of Hulkamania, but there's also a different kind of mania also going in uh, throughout the World Wrestling Federation. This is not really a mania. It's called a madness. It's known as Macho Madness. Would you please welcome the Macho Man, Randy Savage, along with his manager, Elizabeth. <laughs> Yeah, no problem at all, brother. Sit down right there. You're well, not in the danger. What is this right here? Yeah. That's how Little Hulk Hogan type action right there, right? Got a wrestling ring. And I feel 
I feel real strongly about this man right here. Yeah, this is the man who is going to lose to the macho man Randy Savage. Isn't that right, Elizabeth? Oh, yeah. Doing the thing. Yeah. Well, now, uh, Elizabeth, let me ask right you, now. when do you think that the macho man would be oh, ready minute, to right fight? Here, Elizabeth, you sit right over there. Yeah, I understand that. The world around revolves around me. Well, it's so a little easier if we could talk about Elizabeth no than she sits there. All. Hey, John Travolta, Tom Selleck. What are we talking about? Paul Newman. All of them, yeah. They're second place to the Macho Man Randy Savage, the world's sexiest man. Isn't that right, Elizabeth? That's right. Oh, yeah, did you hear her talk right there? She mm -hmm. answered your question. Everything is beautiful, yeah. Doing the thing. Yeah. All right, then when do you feel, uh, Mr. Savage, that you're ready to step into the ring and challenge Hulk Hogan? As the soon as the WWF quits stalling, yeah. What is it stalling? Quits stalling, because that is the only thing that is stopping me from being the WWF World Heavyweight Champion. And, Vince McMahon, if you know anybody that is doing the thing, stalling, the macho man from becoming the world heavyweight champion. Try to speed things up, because all I need is a title match. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Elizabeth? Oh, that's right. Oh, she's smart. This is a smart, yeah, smart we can just, uh, person address, uh, right here. Yeah. Mr. Savage, uh, Elizabeth, um, you've been following the career. Now you're managing, of course, uh, the macho man, Randy Savage. And and I would think that, that enc you encounter some difficulty from time to time. If for no other reason, it's very difficult looking around you, Mr. Savage. If for no other reason, uh, yeah. If for no other reason, certainly dealing with the various wrestling personalities and the very strong eccentric personalities they are, could we please address the conversation? To please Elizabeth? address the conversation, but I was just thinking right off the top of my head right now that I am as quick as a cat. And women love that all over the world, don't they, Elizabeth? Yes, yes. Ian, wouldn't you say that I was like a wild cat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Mr. Savage? Unbelievable. Could women we are accessory to the macho man. Could we conduct the interview? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, no problem at all. Wow, did you see Hulk Hogan go over the top rope right here? Mmm. I am the master of the squared circle. Elizabeth, wouldn't you say that I do it better than anybody has ever done it before? Yes. Wow, mm -hmm. man, that's proof positive right there. I'm starting well, to see a pattern. Uh, I'm starting to see that there's no problem at all. Macho Just man, we, we, the title shot. We're not getting anywhere here. We, we thank you for joining us. Perhaps next time when you return, you maybe, you, maybe Elizabeth, you could join us just by yourself. you got to be ribbed. Thank you very much no, don't for joining us. Sorry, again. we're out of time. Hey, Vince McMahon, don't push me because you will be the first person to say goodnight. Back with more TNT, uh, Lord Alfred Hayes and Vince McMahon here. In a moment, we're going to be joined by a tag team combination, joining forces as of late and actually doing quite well for themselves. They have uh, uh, challenged uh, the former tag team champions and indeed are hopeful of uh, perhaps an opportunity to meet the current tag team champions. That, of course, being Greg Valentine, along with Brutus Beefcake. Would you please welcome Barry O and Rene Goulet. <laughs> You fellas uh, teaming up, as we said before, with quite a bit of success as of late, but you've also been teaming up in a different regard. You're uh, part of the uh, rustling album, we understand, singing Land of a Thousand Dances. And, uh, Renee, your, your nanas were a little different than most everyone else's. Well, don't try to insult me here, but oh, I no, was no, no, no. the first version of it, and yeah. I think I was doing real great on it. Yeah, I'm I had sure. a lot of people calling me and uh, telling me I did a very good uh, singing on it, and yes, I was very happy with it. And also, I would like to talk about our... Uh, Doing in wrestling as a wrestling combination, me and uh, Barry O, we've been doing very well, and yes, uh, we're looking yeah. forward for uh, better opponents. Title matches, title matches, and better opponents. Well, you can't very well have it any better than what we'll take a look at now. Barry O and Rene Goulet are about to square off. We'll join it in progress against the former tag team champions. Smash by Barry O. Watch out now, baby. Yeah. Oh. Look at that, a reverse, one, two. And Rene Goulet able to intercede. 
on his partner's behalf. That was an alert move by Rene Goulet. He saw Barry O was in big trouble the way Wyndham reversed that, and he got down the line and pulled him off. Good move in there by Rene Goulet. There's Captain Louis Albano. You can hear Albano, by the way. Albano hollering instructions at all times. Look at that. Oh, oh. a beautiful drop. He didn't by drop Mike just Latendo. He didn't drop just one leg, Jack. He both. dropped both of them on that arm. Look at this, Rotundo right now. Oh, working on that left arm of Barry O. But Rene Goulet back in there as the referee pushes Goulet back. Now, Wyndham and Rotundo double teaming. And down goes Barry O, too. Look at this, can't get it going. And again, that number one Frenchman's in there to kick him off. Now Barry O coming back into the turnbuckle. There's a whip, Rotundo, ooh, hard whip. Look at that. Dario missing. A tag. Wyndham up on top. Oh. Boy, he caught him good. And that'll dislocate your shoulder quick coming down from that height. Right on top of the shoulder. Look at that. Drop kick. Try for a press. But Goulet in there once again. Wyndham outsmarting Goulet that time. Do you see how he moved away, Jess? Yeah, he outsmarted him, but Goulet accomplished what he wanted right. to. He got him off of Barrio so there wouldn't be a pinfall, Jack. Exactly. Now Goulet in there. Goulet pounding away on Barry Wyndham. There's a whip. Oh, and he caught him real good. Caught him real good. Body slam by Goulet. All right, well, there we saw you fellows in action. Were you, were you impressed with yourselves? I was impressed for sure, and I wish they would keep on uh, showing this why, tape there because I had him beat there. Why didn't, the they four show, more. why didn't they show us beat those guys? I don't know. The, the Larry Wyndon and Michael Tenna, former world champion. At that time, we wrestled them. They were champion, mm -hmm. and I wish they would keep on showing this tape there because right we had them beat You beat there. them in the... Absolutely. It's not well, in the record book. No, I don't believe it is, as a matter well, of fact. Well, you better check the record book again, then. I wasn't talking to you anyway. Right. I'm talking to Mr. McMahon. Well, here. nonetheless, you Please. fellas will no doubt have an opportunity uh, to, to meet them somewhere down the line again, and uh, perhaps the results would be the same. Absolutely. Yes, the same. We're going to beat them like we did before. And then and that goes get, for the new world champion. Then we're going to get also. a chance at the world championship. Mm hmm. And then from there, we can probably find you back doing a. Some sort of uh, music package or what? And, and Renee's gonna do background vocals? And listen to that music, my French version. You're gonna like it. Okay. And everybody else is gonna right. love it. If you can't find us there, you can find us out on the. Uh... All right, back with more TNT. As a matter of fact, to join us now, ladies and gentlemen, an individual who has. Well, I guess he's. He's transgressed into not just one of the great uh, athletes in the World Wrestling Federation, but our next guest honestly feels that he's going to prove this week on TNT that, that he's worthy of being known as, as a great actor, that, that Hollywood is definitely going to be knocking at the door. I hate to argue with him when he's on the set, but before he does come on, I'd like to say I think he should stay with wrestling. He is magnificent. That's why his name is magnificent at wrestling, but sadly lacking in acting however i must say in his defense that the only thing that you have seen the only thing that i have seen is the uh, fuji general piece yeah, and right. that was really horrid well i <laughs> it made me laugh gosh but, but nonetheless now mr morocco uh, just this week apparently had, had his own director mm -hmm. his uh, his own uh, apparently said gifted actors with him mm -hmm. uh, so we'll take a look at that when, when he comes out. Would you please now welcome the magnificent Morocco. Pleasure to be back here once again. Well, have have I seen. got a script for you? you have don't. I got a script? Did we have, did we have a good time? Did I have people, brother? But I'm brother, when you talk about proud, when you talk about your chest puffing out and your throat swelling up as big as it can swell up, 
When you can take an actor like Freddie Blassie, a man of his character, and bring something out of him that's never been brought out of him before. Hmm. When you can take a fabulous woman like Moolah and bring something out of her. And, and fabulous Fred, Moolah? Fabulous, fabulous Moolah is exactly it. Fabulous Moolah. When you can take a person like that and create and create and deliver. Oh, happy day, happy day, happy day. You had, this is you a had, you had Freddie here. Blassie. This is a you good You had Freddie time. Blassie, you had the fabulous Moolah. We had jump, Jumping Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the south, the man. Jimmy Hart? The man has got class. And you we brought saw out... him out singing here. Who can he sing? All right, Not all right. only can he Fine. sing, he may has we please feeling. Take a, may we he please take emotion. a look at this? You can all right, we can all now take a look at the magnificent Morocco in this piece. I don't know what it's entitled, but let's let's take a look at it now. Well, the stakes are getting a little high for me. I think I'll be moseying along. Uh, just sit down. Sit down. Well, sure, Mississippi. <laughs> the only ones to walk away from a card game when Mississippi's dealing are now doing time on Boot Hill. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, dog. Keep your hands off me, Greenhorn. You must be local. Leo belongs to Morocco Kid. Not the Morocco Kid. <laughs> and I don't need the Morocco Kid to handle my dirty stuff. You posing for a Russian Pencil neck geek, you! That's it, Lil. Can we call you? What did you get? Oh, my. Room for one more. Hey, man. He is getting very stale around here. <laughs> Me not too crazy about you, pale face. Hey, Lil, is it true that the Morocco kid is coming to town? I thought Ringo had him locked up in Abilene, honey. There's no jail can hold the kid. Only you can hold the kid, huh, Lil? That's right. I win. Well, I don't like the way you're dealing. All your cards are coming off the bottom of that deck. You have any complaints? It's fair to me. <laughs> Pretty ill, baby. Deal as fair as new driven snow on open plain where eagles soar and corn grow plenty and children play and clouds soar over and blue skies are plenty and corn grow and we make whiskey. Fair, fair, what's the matter? Two, you get egg rolled. Why are you talking egg roll? It's fair dealing, what's the matter, you crazy? That's right. Well, I don't ah. like it. Why you don't like it? Are you accusing me of cheating? Oh, you I feel. about the size of it. Now put your dirty deal hands on the table. And I'll take what's rightfully mine, and I'll be leaving you varmints. Morocco, I'm glad you're here. All right, let's play him out. Little I missed you. Now can a man get a drink around here? Sure, kid, sure. By the way, yeah. Uh, did you hear the one about the... Just give me the drink. Uh, the usual, right, kid? I thought you'd never get out of jail, kid. I love you, Lil. I wrote as fast as I could. Nothing could keep me from your lips, not even Ringo. So you finally killed Ringo? Yeah, did you kill the marshal? We won't see Marshal Ringo around for a long time. <clears throat> I wouldn't be too sure of that, Morocco. Ringo! Ringo! I thought I left you for dead at the bottom of Cactus Canyon. It was just a flesh wound, Morocco. You made it very convenient for me, boys. I ought to lock you all up. Poncho for rustling. Mississippi, you for gambling and train robbery. And you, Morocco, for murder. You're not going to get away this time. You're very brave for a man who would outnumber five to one. They look like good odds to me from where I'm sitting. Morocco, <laughs> first I'm going to take care of you. 
hand over that gun belt. Don't make me laugh. I want that belt. I'll show you who's the fastest. Wait, wait, no! Oh, oh. oh kid. Oh, I love you. I love you. I need a glass of water. She'd still be alive if you hadn't come to town, Ringo. You killed my Lil. Now it's going to be my pleasure to kill you. Big mess. The Marshal's dead! Who wrote that? Have you ever seen such sincerity in your life? Have you Who ever wrote seen that? such creative rel re relativity? When you looked at Moolah and referred to her ruby red lips or whatever. Mm. And then, and then when she was dying, when... Oh, when didn't, didn't you want to cry? Couldn't you just lay there and cry when she was dying there? I, I sat here myself and watched it, and I got tears in my eyes. I want to tell you, those are real tears when I watch her die, I watch her die again. Uh, what? what it, a, break, it breaks my heart. What, a, what about the most ridiculous thing was Fuji with that... Did he look bad? He looked like the baddest dude west of the Pecos, north of the Rockies, and east of the moon. He was so bad. Did you see how bad he looked? Oh, my goodness, Clint in his would lines. eat your heart out. <laughs> Sam Peckinpah, eat your heart out. We got something here that is just solid gold. Me and Mr. Fuji, the magnificent one. All right, Mr. Morocco, I need to leave you now. I think unlimited. Mr. Morocco, I think if Hollywood is calling now, I think the phone uh, is ringing for you right now. Right, we'll right, be back as we continue over. with more TNT. Right, Stay with us. On it, oh. All right, Alfred, your honest reaction to uh, the latest attempt of the magnificent Morocco to convince the producers in Hollywood that indeed he is a great acting talent. Oh, gosh. Well, the only thing I can think is that Morocco must have more money than sense, and so must Fuji, because I know that as uh, successful professional wrestlers, they have made a lot of money. Are they going to throw it away chasing some ridiculous dream of being actors? That's quite stupid. He is Mr. Magnificent because he is magnificent at wrestling. Well, that was... Uh... A production that he paid for on his own. Yes, I know. It must have cost what do you a think fortune. Of Fuji with the. the oh. <laughs> well, he didn't spend much on Fuji's uniform. Obviously, no, I, did, I don't he? think. And but the fabulous Moolah, I thought looked great. She did look good, didn't she? By the way, next week on TNT, we'll have a little bit more on the wrestling album for you. Also, uh, an update on the Rolls Royce uh, classic, and that is really coming into its own. And the cards and letters pouring in there, as well as uh, more advice for the love, Lauren. We'll have that and more. Next week on TNT, join us if you would. <laughs> <laughs>